Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and welcome to our webinar. And our topic today is getting all flash performance with Intel SSD and Starwind's Hyper Converged Appliance. My name is Max Kalamitev. I'll be your host for today's event. And we also have William Shear, who is going to tell us a lot of new interesting things about Intel flash technologies, where they stand today, how they help us, and how they're going to help us even more in the nearest future. Just a small note before we continue, we are recording this event. So just in case any one of your friends decides he wants to watch a webinar a time later, you can share the recording with him. You can just go to our YouTube channel and the recording of this event will be available there about one day after we have this event. With that, let me just talk a little bit more about our presenters. So uh, myself, Max, I'm Starwind's HCA product manager, and uh, I happen to be virtual send manager as well. Yeah, we're a small company. And uh, I'm with Starwind for almost 10 years at this point. And uh, if you want to do, get some technical details about our software or just chat on technology topics, I'm available on Spiceworks as Max at Starwind. And our featured speaker today, William Shear, is a real industry veteran with 35 years in the IT industry. His solutions architect was Intel Non-Volatile Memory Group, and he specializes in software-defined storage. So with that, I would like to transition to Alan and ask you to tell us a little bit more about today's SSD technology and where we stand. By the way, we're starting with busting some SSD myths and see what is truth and what is not. Alan? Yeah, if you want to move to the next slide, Max, and, and hello to everyone. Thanks for attending. Hopefully I'm coming through loud and clear. Five um, five. One of the myths one of the myths that we do have about SSDs in this marketplace uh, has been around for a while, and it's because the first uh, flash products were not tremendously reliable. They they had a problem of wearing out very quickly, and it's one of those things that once that idea gets in the mind of the public, it's hard to overcome. So it's important to recognize that the typical failure rate for hard drives is somewhere between two and a half to five percent of the drives um, currently installed per year, um, and and that. Current SSDs, in, including non-Intel SSDs, are about 10 times better than that. And we know from our own testing of both our SSDs as well as the uh, many of our competitors that we can actually uh, claim very reliable that, uh, reliably that our failure rate is 20 times better than that of hard drives. So we're definitely at a point in the history of technology where this idea that somehow um, spinning disk or rust on a platter, as I, I call it sometimes, um, is reliable and that somehow SSDs aren't. That's a complete myth, and it's, it's been a myth for a while. We need to put that to bed. Um, so if you can go to the next slide, I want to talk a little bit. Waiting for the next. Oh, there we go. I want to talk about one of the things that we do specifically to make sure that that you don't have any problems with our drives. And this is something we do that the rest of the industry, um, so far as we know, does not do. And we know this because if you look, look on the screen there, there's a couple of logos. One's for the Los Alamos Neutron Science Center, and the other one is for the, uh, what is it? I think it's Indiana or Indiana, Indiana University, I think, uh, Cyclotron Operations Center. These are the only two places in the world right now that will do this kind of testing. And nobody else is doing it but us. And it has to do with something called um, silent errors. And there is a um, link here to the bottom of a blog article that goes into great detail about what silent errors are and how it affects flash memory. Um, if you don't want to copy that link down real quick, 
uh, you can certainly get a hold of me um, later, or I'm sure Max could point you in our direction as well, and we'll tell you all about it. But the general idea is all flash technology, um, with the exclusion of some new things that are just coming on the market, operates by trapping electrons within a within a, um, a silicon structure or some other kind of structure. And what happens is, believe it or not, things like cosmic rays can hit those electrons and flip a bit on the NAND. And that's a disaster because it means your your RAM, your your um, your flash storage is now not reliable. Now this happens rarely, but it happens often enough that there have been some some pretty uh, interesting cases in the past few year with years with Yahoo's and Yahoo and some other companies that have actually validated that by using um, flash solutions that don't protect against this problem, they've actually exhibited millions of dollars of losses and downtime. So we test for this kind of thing rather aggressively, and we can definitely say that our silent error rate is up to 255 times better than the next major competitor. By the way, when I talk about this, often we hear that, like, well, my RAID will take care of that, or I've got a high availability setup. This is not something that can be caught by any firmware or any RAID technology or anything like this because it's not a part of the read or write process that goes through the controller. It's just an actual cosmic ray or something like that hitting an electron in exactly the right way so that it flips a bit. It's rare, but it happens often enough that it is a serious problem, and it is, it is one of the ways that we try to make our drives uh, much better than our competition. Um, if I can have the next slide, please. Waiting for that one. Um, Okay, good. It didn't look like it was going to come through right there for a second. One of the things that Starwin is doing um, later is they are, in addition to uh, having some products that feature our SATA SSDs, is they're going to begin supporting NVMe. And NVMe is a storage technology that is really exciting because it, it sort of takes that RAID controller out of the equation or your HBA card, and it uses a much thinner protocol so now, if you kind of take a look at traditional hard drives on the side and SSD storage over here on the side, uh, on the on the right hand side, you'll see they're using less power. It's ridiculously faster. There are no moving parts, of course, because it's flash and it's mm. definitely rugged and reliable. Um, next slide, please. Yes, sir. You're doing a great job, Max. <laughs> And to give you some idea, this slide shows you the relative efficiency uh, and latency of current SAS and SATA SSDs, this is flash we're talking about here, versus the NVMe drives. And you'll notice that in all of these cases, the NVMe is considerably faster. And part of that is you'll see that um, if you look at the legend, the area on the bottom there that's shown for drive, controller, software, and NVMe, that the controller and software in SAS and SATA technologies adds a lot to the uh, the latency uh, and for that matter the efficiency of, of uh, and the throughput of the media. The media bar, if you take a look at that, the blue the blue bar there that we call the drive, that's the same on SATA, SAS, and NVMe right now. It's the same actual memory that we're being used, but we're we're taking that protocol out of there, that controller and that software, and so we get things you know two and a half, two point three times more efficient and definitely uh, one and a half times better latency. So on a lot of applications, including virtualization, uh, virtual servers, virtual desktops, that latency figure gets to be important so you can get like a real, a real server-like or a real desktop-like experience. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Do, 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 do. And so you'll see here, uh, another thing we like to show you, we're showing our SSDs against uh, SAS and SATA um, SSDs, the NVMe product, the, the, the SSD P3700s, and you can see that it's definitely a much better performing product. But we also talk about this thing at the bottom a lot, and that is that we guarantee our drives will operate at 90% consistency throughout the life of the drive for whatever the published specs are. That is not the case with all SSDs on the market right now. We know that some of them we test, you take them right out of the box and you put them in and they, they're just ridiculously fast and they perform well. But if you come back three months later when you maybe got 40%, 50%, 60% of the drive filled up, or you come back a couple of years later, 
that drive is not performing the spec anymore, and sometimes by quite a bit. But at Intel, we'll guarantee you that you will be able to um, have 90% of the published specification of the performance of that drive for the life of the drive, and that's five years, the five-year warranty. If it's not performing within spec, that's cause for a warranty claim, and we'd be happy to replace the drive in that point in time. Um, go on to the next slide, please. Of course. I just wanted to add that this is one of the biggest hypes in the SSD world I've actually heard from our customers. Mm. Just the performance is not consistent, and it's not going to be consistent. This is how people don't believe in the technology. And the technology has already changed, and some people still don't believe in the old one, and we're already ready for the new one. So tell us about Crosspoint, Alan. Okay, this is the big new thing, the new hotness that everybody is really excited about. Uh, we announced this uh, earlier in 2015, in 2015 um, that um, 3D Crosspoint is a technology that we've developed along with Micron, and I know that Starwin is getting ready um, to use this technology when it's available. Part of the path to getting that technology availability is to be working with the NVMe product right now. So it's a, a really good thing that Starwind is already working with that product line. Uh, 3D Crosspoint does a number of things for us. It's completely new technology. It's not based upon trapping electrons to store bits and bytes. It is based on a kind of a, a whole new physics is the way that we're putting it. And it's actually something that a few years ago people would have said, no, that's impossible. But Intel being impossible, we would like to do the uh, Intel likes to do the impossible, I should say. And this is going to be, the memory fabric anyway, is going to be a thousand times faster than any current flash memory product. The memory itself. The endurance is going to be a thousand times greater. Now right now when you buy SSDs, you'll usually buy them and they'll tell you what the endurance is. It'll say it's good for this many read writes or it's good for this many years at this many writes per day or whatever. This is going to be a thousand times greater than that. So our whole point of if this is reliable enough or not, it completely goes out the window. I mean, it, it's in, we're in a whole different universe now. And the interesting thing is that it's also 10 times denser than current DRAM, RAM memory technologies. So we've got a non-volatile technology which has very close to memory-like speeds, but it's got the non-volatile capabilities that Flash had, and at the same time it's got incredible endurance and it's a lot faster than any current NAND technology. So you're going to see a mix of products coming out. Some of them will be in an NVMe type of package, and um, we've got some things planned later on that will perhaps be in more of a memory type package, and Starwind is definitely um, on, on the map getting ready for this technology coming on down the line. And did I have any more slides, Max? I think that was my last one. Yeah, I think so too. So just to clarify and make things simple, simple, and simpler than ever, that means that not only you will have the ability to run all flash, not at, let's say, 20 terabyte per server, but at 200 terabyte per server, you will also be able to enjoy your one terabyte smartphone or your 128 gigabyte RAM in your laptop. So that's going to be a whole new world. Yes, and it's going it's, 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 people use this phrase a lot, and they overuse this phrase a lot, but it really is going to be a game changer. It's going to make a lot of things possible that are not possible right now, and part of the reason for that is that 10 times denser than DRAM nature of the technology. So it's going to become possible to pack more stuff in a smaller space while making it, at the same time, incredibly fast and incredibly reliable. Great. Thank you so much for shedding some light on where technology stands today with Flash. And uh, just to remind, our topic today is getting all Flash performance and ways to get it. So what I wanted to do here is uh, to show what's the common first thing people want to do when they think Flash in an enterprise world. Well, we've got new SSD capabilities, and we need SSDs for solving our problems. The problem is with virtualization, the storage is under the heaviest stress it had ever. And one of the easiest ways to solve this is to 
transition from old Rust, as Alan previously said, which is spindle disks, to old Flash solution. And typical approach would be, okay, we'll just change the drives in our SAN, and we'll put all Flash drives in one SAN, connect our compute layer to that. So just as you see here on the screen, we've got a typical N node environment with multiple compute nodes and a SAN, which could previously be a standard SAN. Right now, it's an all Flash SAN, brand new. We've spent millions of dollars on it. And uh, here is one small thing which may spoil the entire SAN enjoyment. Joy here. I've just added a small caption. Let's play a find a bottleneck game. From the first glance, everything looks just as it would typically look in a SAN environment. You've got your compute host, you've got your SAN, everything's redundant, everything's reliable. And uh, with Flash, we get tons of performance. We get microsecond latency. So at this point, all our interconnect in this picture, so the entire networking stack becomes a huge bottleneck. And at this point, we do get the IOPS, but we do not get the latency. So in order to get rid of the latency, we can only get rid of the networking itself, which means we need to change our approach on storing the data on flash. So sands are good, but when you get closer to light speed, you get whole new laws of physics kicking in. And let me just remove the old drawings and I'll start doing the new ones. As I said, there is a much better place for Flash in this world. It's not the SAN. It should be a virtual SAN sitting closer to your virtual machines and sitting closer to your applications. So right now we have nodes which are equipped with local Flash and we do not do a dedicated layer of storage anymore and we omit the entire networking layer with this step. So instead of going from the virtual machine to the hypervisor and then going to the initiator, then going to the network stack, then there will be probably some RAM caching or DRAM or NVRAM caching on the storage unit, and only then we get to the flash drive. That is tremendously slow. We couldn't do that with the amount of IOPS we have put in our old flash array and the amount of money we've spent on it. It will just be really, really slow, like a car without wheels. It will make some noise, but it will not go anywhere. So we transition the flash to our compute nodes. And at this point, we are becoming hyper-converged as we are merging storage and compute layers. And we are working from the hypervisor layer directly to RAM and flash, which gives us that ability to maintain microseconds latency and astonishing high IOPS in the new world. And of course, we need to make sure that our data is protected so we synchronize the information between our nodes. So this is exactly what Starwind's all flash hyperconverged appliance is about. And uh, we took this approach from just spindles and tiered storage as there are multiple types of customers, multiple types of workloads and multiple problems we need to solve. Some problems can be solved with just spindles. Some problems can only be solved with Flash. And we're also developing the Optane-based solution. And at this point, it's only safe to say Optane ready. But there will be solutions which say, I need four unit high performance computing cluster, which needs to deliver 5 million IOPS at least for my space calculations. That's the only way we will be able to get out of this planet and actually colonize the space. So we're trying to be on the verge here. And uh, 
right now we're trying to make that all flash performance and all flash appliances something available not only to the huge enterprises but also to the commodities and this is the basic model we have available it has from 24 to 40 cores up to half terabyte of ram and can get you up to 16 terabyte of flash storage with uh, a little bit less than that being actually usable and uh, it already features 10 gigabit and 40 gigabit ethernet good thing is for the ethernet you do not need a 10 gigabit or a 40 gigabit switch to start so that's a little easier on the budget to get you a high performance computing cluster in your environment without actually rebuilding the whole environment like a lot of people had this issue previously was investing in the fiber channel infrastructure and then seeing that fiber channel moved to the enterprise but smbs didn't really accept it so there is no such issue as rebuilding infrastructure with starwinds hyperconverged appliance you can start with just putting in two servers and migrating your applications there now there is of course a bigger player in our team which is the excel flash and this one is pretty huge i would say it's, it features up to 56 compute cores these are dual sockets 20 uh I think it's yeah, 14 cores CPU in each, up to one terabyte of RAM and about 38 terabytes of flash available in these units. And there will be more flash as we're working on a technology where we deliver better performance by tiering between NVMe and SSD. And there will be also one more tier in this technology but it is currently outside of this picture and i would just say stay tuned for news from starwind and see how we change the way to store data once again with that i would like to thank everyone for attending our event and we're getting to the most interesting part where we have our questions so at this point feel free to use the go to meeting sorry go to webinar control panel to ask any questions you may have Okay, so first first question is rather half a question. So we, we have fans who are promoting our solution and they want us to like their Facebook page, which we'll definitely do. I will pass it over to the marketing team and I will also like it myself. Anyone who promotes high performance computing and uh, new ways of storing data is welcome here. Now, one more question we got. Question from John. Can I set up this solution with uh, the VMware hypervisor? Indeed, we do support Hyper-V and VMware hypervisors and currently working on implementing KVM support. So you can use it with vSphere as well. Was there a question for me? I, I there was an uncomfortable <laughs> pause. No, there. not yet. So it, okay, it, your part of the presentation was so good. I I wouldn't have any questions to that. <laughs> but actually, I do have one question to you. Uh, what are Intel plans to 
increase the number of uh, drives you can put in a system. So at some point I, I realized that the CPUs will become a bottleneck for all that performance that NVMe delivers. Right. Um, well, of course, there's, there's some things I can discuss and some things that I can't. Um, we are working with all of the major hardware vendors to do various things to um, increase the throughput and the latency. Uh, some of those do involve things like um, creating um, hardware platforms that can support more PCIe lanes, which is going to be um, definitely a must, especially in the near term, to support all the NVMe-based technologies and NVMe-based um, uh, drives, especially. Um, there are other technologies that are being um, built around the idea of using um, non-volatile based RAM products based on Optane technology um, and making those available uh, in the same way as RAM is uh, addressable. I don't want to get really technical into programming details, but use those non-volatile capabilities in some really interesting ways. Because right now, you know, all of your RAM is volatile and that creates some problems. Um, if you had a non-volatile technology, you can start doing some interesting things. I know that's being a little bit um, vague, but <laughs> I hopefully it gives you a little bit better idea where we're headed. So for the virtualization-centric audience, uh, get your note notepads and write down. So the next big startup in the memory field will be getting synchronization between non-volatile RAM between the host running virtual machines. So that will be next big thing, bringing, let's say, vSphere's fault tolerance to a whole new level. This is the way you can make money in the nearest one or two years. Yeah, and one of the, one of the things that's going to be exciting is that we do think that the, uh, the Optane technology in memory uh, could conceivably uh, be really interesting from, from a price performance standpoint. Right now, it's not quite as fast as standard DRAM, but it can be incredibly dense, and conceivably, it'll be quite a bit less expensive. So you did talk earlier about having large, large, massive amounts of, of RAM. It, it's not really RAM. It's going to be an Optane-based technology. But the price performance uh, could be very, very attractive for creating systems that look like they've got 128 gigabytes of, of RAM, 256 or more, going into very, very large-scale applications. I don't know anything specific about where that's headed, but I do know that that's the kind of thing that a lot of people in the industry mm. are discussing. Great. And uh, let me just see. Okay, and one more question from our attendees. Are you looking into the NVMe over Fabrics technologies? Uh, at this point, I would only answer yes, we're actively looking into that field. And uh, we think there is a lot to do with uh, this type of technology until we get denser systems, like Ellen previously told about more PCI lanes per system. And uh, indeed, it's really interesting technology, and it will find its use. I think we will start seeing first solutions like that later this year. So I anticipate something appearing even in the third quarter of 2016. So indeed. And by the way, a quick question to our audience while we still have you. Has any one of you heard of the NVMe over Fabrics technology? You can just use GoToMeeting questions and answers if you have heard about it. Okay, so we probably got into some really, really spa spacecraft technology here as uh, our attendees are not yet aware of that technology. So then this will definitely be something we'll discuss a little bit more during our next events to just uh, make it more of an education of where the market is heading and where will be the next big performance 
breakthrough in the hyperconvergence. And with that, I would like to thank everyone for attending our today's event. Ellen, thank you so much for a great presentation on the flash technologies and especially on the new part which is coming this year. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And everyone have a good day. Bye-bye.